Hello, welcome to my tutorial on Pace Handicapping. We can call this Pace Handicapping 101. So here's what I know about Pace Handicapping. What you're trying to do when you're Pace Handicapping, when you're analyzing Pace, is you're trying to look for the horse that did the most work in the race. And to show this point, we are going to look at three different races today. Uh, one of them is the 1978 Jockey Club Gold Cup, which was won by Exceller, but it also featured Seattle Slough. And the other two races that we're going to look at is the 2018 Woody Stevens and the 2018 Amsterdam. And both races featured uh, Promises Fulfilled and Gage and still having fun actually won the Woody Stevens so we're going to focus on those three races, and we're going to see if we can learn anything about pace handicapping. Who knows, maybe I'll learn something about pace handicapping by going through this. So let's run the 1978 Jockey Club Gold Cup. The events in sporting history. Sit forward and hang on to your seats and let the late Chick Anderson describe this barn burner. Again, this race features Seattle Slough versus Exceller. And you're going to see Seattle, Seattle Slough on, on the inside. On the outside, it's Life's Hope. Those three go out and I, I think that's Affirmed in the middle and Life's Hope. Six back, one e either uh, Affirmed is in the middle or the outside. I'm not sure. They move into the term, a three -horse team. But anyways, Seattle, uh, Seattle Slough is on the lead. And, second, and, Life's Hope and you, you'll notice that it's a three-horse speed duel. Uh, speed duel is generally not a good thing for a speed horse, uh, especially if there's not a lot of breathing room. And you see here, Seattle Sioux is on the inside, so he has the rail to his left, and he has affirmed in life's hope to his outside. So he has no breathing room at all, and he went through the first half in 45-1, which is actually a blazing fast pace for a mile and a half. Uh, so, Seattle Slough up until now has had the roughest trip of all. Then the trailer is still great contractor. They want a half in 45 and 1. The pace is very fast. Down the back stretch, it's Seattle Slough now one length. Affirmed to second by. You see here, Life's Hope is beginning to tire. Even though she actually had the best trip of those three horses on the lead because she had breathing room to her outside uh, but she's gonna fade out of the picture now and affirmed who won the triple crown this year he won it in 1978 is still stubbornly sticking around but he's slowly fading and triple crown winner in 1977 seattle slew is trying to open up on the field, but Exceller is moving up on the inside right here. And the reason Exceller is moving up is because he's taking advantage of the pace. Uh, the pace was so fast that it completely destroyed Affirmed and Life's Hope, who I think is a champion Philly, but I'm not completely sure on that. Uh, but you see Seattle Slew on the inside, he's actually fighting back. Wait, that's not Seattle Slew. Seattle Slew on the outside is fighting back. That's what I meant to say. Exceller on the inside made that big sweeping move on the turn. And maybe I can go back to it. Followed by one cut above and finally great contractor. Three quarters of a mile went in a very... I said the point is that you're trying to find a horse that did the most work. And if you think about the fact that Seattle Slew... Uh, went the opening quarter in 22, went the opening half in 45, and he was taking heat from two very good horses and affirmed in life's hope just to his outside. Uh, you could reason that Seattle Slew did a lot of work up until this point. And Exceller, who was way back there, uh, he was just waiting for the right moment or the right time uh, he took advantage of what happened to Seattle Slough in the first half of the race, and he made his rally up the rail. And you can see him trying to put Seattle Slough away, but what makes Seattle Slough a legend 
is that he never gives up here. He's so talented and, and such a great horse that he survived those fractions and he survived the three horse speed duel and he was still fighting towards the end. And that is the mark of a great champion. So the next thing we're going to look at here is the Woody Stevens. And we're going to look at Promises Fulfilled, uh, Engage, and Still Having Fun, who actually won this race. So we're going to try to apply the principles of what we learned to analyzing this race. And we're going to see what we come up with. Start the race. They're off in the Woody Stevens. And it is pure shot to the inside, sent out of there with Promises Fulfilled. Who's so you see Promises Fulfilled is being sent to the lead where he likes to be. And he has a speed horse to his outside named, I think that's World of Trouble. Although World of Trouble isn't really right on him, but they're going pretty fast. 21 and 46. This is a seven furlong race. And this is at Belmont Park. Although Belmont Park can play pretty fast too. But World of Trouble is now pressuring him right here. I still think they're going pretty fast. I think the next fraction is 44. 43 actually. 43 and 68. And Promises Fulfilled has the worst of it because he has a rail to his side and he has another horse to his outside. But you're going to see that Promises Fulfilled will put World of Trouble away in the stretch run. At least I think he puts him away. And you're going to see Engage come up. I think that's en Engage in the green silks. And still having fun swoops by all of them. But Promises Fulfilled doesn't quite put away World of Trouble, but... He does finish in front of him. Let's watch that again. So, what do we have here? We have Promises Fulfilled taking some heat from Roll of Trouble. And they're going very fast. If you think of 43 and change, that would be fast for a 6 furlong race. But this is a 7 furlong race. So that is pretty much suicidal. And you have Engage here who switches out to the outside. So he has a clear run at the leaders. And he has still having fun, who is already on the outside. And he has a clear run on the leaders. And they both have no traffic problems to deal with. They just need to mow down the leaders, and that's what they do. Although, still having fun, who is farther back. Let's see where still having fun was. Um, still having fun was... Way back there, I think he was like around 7th, and my computer is slowing down, I think. But he was way back there, which means this race really favored closers. And even though Engage was a closer, he actually took some of the pace because he was close enough that he could feel how fast they were going. But still having fun, he was just too much for them because he took advantage of the pace while... Promises Fulfilled, who did all the work, actually still ran very well. He still ran very well if you think about how fast they went, 43 and 68. And he never gave up, and he had the worst position. On the rail with another horse pressuring him to his outside. In the center of the track with each and every stride and beautiful shot is closing late as well. Here's still having fun alongside of Engage. Promises fulfilled. World of trouble. Beautiful shot. Still so, having fun. Wins the Woody Stevens. From watching that, you could reason that Promises fulfilled maybe ran the best race because he had to go in 21. He had to go in 43. And he had another horse on the outside. So... You could reason that Promises Fulfilled was doing the dirty work and World of Trouble was doing a lot of work too. But they both stubbornly hang they both stubbornly hung in there. Uh, none of them faded. But let's see if we can find a speed horse that was around the same area that faded. Um, 
Pure shot, he kind of doesn't count because he's 63 to 1. The tabulator, he was right there in strike power too. I think that that horse on the outside is strike power. And I think this horse in the black cap might be the tabulator. And you see t the tabulator is starting to get pretty tired here. Of course he was a long shot. I mean, it, it's kind of a fine line. You want to... You want to look for signs that the pace was very fast and that the speed horses are tiring. But at the same time, uh, some horses just aren't meant to win because they're long shots. Well, not just because they're long shots, but because they didn't have the form to win on paper. But Strike Power is a good horse, even though he didn't, he hasn't shown it since the this whale stakes at Gulf Stream, but he's a good horse. We're going to look at one more race, and we're going to assume that Promises Fulfill ran the best race in the Woody Stevens because he took the brunt of the pace, and he, he still fought pretty well, even though he faded to third. So here is the Amsterdam stakes, I think a month or two later. And you see Strike Power, who was in the Woody Stevens too, he actually goes to the front this time and he tries to be the one that outduels Promises Fulfilled, but Promises Fulfilled will, will sit out, outside of him this time. So I know he likes going to the lead, but this time Promises Fulfilled is the one applying the heat to the leader, which is an unusual change of pace. And Engage, who made that that good move on the outside for second, is right here on the inside. And he's going to switch outside. They normally say that when a horse saves ground on the inside and switches out for the outside, switches out on the far turn, that's the best possible trip a stalker can have because he saved ground for most of the race. And then he switched outside and has... Um, has clear run at the leader like Engage has clear run right here so there's no excuse for Engage not to catch Promises Fulfilled because they went pretty fast uh, did they go fast? let me see those fractions or don't, or don't show the fractions I'll just go back Yeah, they, they went pretty fast. They went in 21-28 for their opening quarter. Let's see what the half mile went in. Forty-three ninety-two. So they went pretty fast. I think it's a six and a half for a long race. So, considering they went pretty fast, strike power and promises fulfilled, uh, and engaged, saved ground on the inside, and swooped outside for the far turn. I'm gonna go back to it. See here, engaged, uh, saving ground on the inside as they're starting to the turn, and then he switched outside at the right moment. There was no excuse for him not to pass Promises Fulfilled. The only reason that he wouldn't pass Promises Fulfilled is that Promises Fulfilled is a really damn good horse and is able to withstand a fast pace and still keep going, at least if it's a sprint race. Uh, Promises Fulfilled went really fast in the Fountain of Youth earlier in the year, and that was a two-turn route, and then he faded badly along with Strike Power, but... That's a two-turn route. When Promises Fulfilled is in a sprint race and he goes fast, he's capable of going fast for the entire race. And he's probably the best three-year-old dirt sprinter in the nation. So 
my theory is, well, not my theory, but my way of handicapping is, you, you, my way of handicapping is to look for the horse that did the most work in the race, uh, whether it's whether it's up front or whether it's from the back. And the way you look for a pace compromised horse from the back is you look for a slow pace and you look for a closer that did pretty well to close for second or third from maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 legs out of it. But he had to do it overcoming a slow pace. And that would be a pace compromised closer. But what we looked at today was were pace compromised front runners like Exceller and Promises Fulfilled, who was pace compromised in the Woody Stevens, and then he came back to win the Amsterdam. So the whole point of this is to look for horses uh, that didn't have the best of trips from a pace standpoint, but you can call them the best horse in the race because they did the most work out of all the horses that were in the race. Like, nobody would say Exceller is a better horse than Seattle Sioux, and most people that would watch the 1970 Jockey Club Gold Cup would reason that Seattle Sioux, S Seattle Sioux uh, ran better than Exceller. Of course, it's kind of easy for them to say that because um, Seattle Sioux is a beloved legend, and he's from the 1970s. And when you think of 1970s horses, uh, you think of horses with incredible fan bases to this day. Uh, but you can still apply that logic that you saw in the 1970 Jockey Club Gold Cup to any race. It doesn't matter if it's the Woody Stevens or the Amsterdam or if it's just the claiming 20K race for cheap horses. The point is, you're trying to look for the horse that did the most work, and clearly in the Woody Stevens, um, promises fulfilled with that 43 and 68, 43, 68 half, did the most work in the Woody Stevens. And then he went on to win, he went on to win the Amsterdam. Of course, Promises Fulfilled is a pretty popular horse in his own right. And it's going to be hard to get value on him. But if you could apply that logic to long shots or, or horses that aren't as well known by the public and that could possibly get overlooked, then maybe you can hit a winning bet or two. Maybe. I mean... I'm not going to lie and say that it's all easy because it's not. Uh, nothing about handicapping or betting is easy at all. So that's my little tutorial on pace handicapping. Uh, maybe it's helpful. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm wrong on something. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'll even make another one of these videos. So that's it. Uh, we'll see if I make another, another handicapping video. And if I do, see you guys next time.